24th of March, uh, me and my family, my father and my mother, we were coming back to our home from my grandmother's house because we didn't have power, we didn't have gas, no water. And to cook food, we visited her and we helped to cook food for her and my grandfather. And we were coming back, it was around 4 p.m. It wasn't dark, uh, we had white stripes. The Russian soldiers told us to wear white stripes to show that we are civilians. And right here, uh, my father was the first one, then my mother, and I was the last one. So I could see my mother, she was very close to me. And suddenly, there were, we didn't see any soldiers, any signs, nothing to, to show that we can't walk this way and we walk this way in the morning. But suddenly, a very loud gunshot. It was so fast. I, I, I couldn't hear anything of that of the loud blasts on my right ear and I saw my mother like something was flying off her head actually it was maybe her blood or maybe a bullet but it was so fast I couldn't understand what's happening and I just screamed lay down and we all fall on the ground I checked if my ear is bleeding uh, it was okay but I couldn't hear anything so I I saw my father, he was laying on the ground too. He asked me if I am fine, I said, I'm okay. But I saw that something, something flew out, out of my mother's head. My father told me to hide behind her body. I came to her, uh, I tried to call her. I was near her legs, I tried to shake her leg, I, she didn't react. I thought maybe she was shocked or she doesn't want to turn attention, so she wants like, to hide, but she didn't react. I called again and again, so then I just stood up a little bit, I got on my knees and I turned to her face and I saw that all her head is in blood, there was blood everywhere, from her nose, from her mouth, maybe even from her eyes. Her, her forehead was in blood, everything was in blood. She, she tried to breathe, but the blood was coming and she just couldn't breathe because, because of all of this. And I hope she, she didn't understand what's happening anymore because the bullet got right in front of her head, right between her eyes, and it went through all of her head, and at that moment I couldn't understand what's happening. I saw that it's very bad. I tried to call her, I tried to shake her hand, I thought maybe she'll hold me. She did not react, so I understood that there is nothing I can help, nothing I can do, I can help her. So I just laid behind her and I started to scream and then we my father saw that there near those blue gates there are some soldiers who who is there was a soldier who looked at us so my father uh, tried to call him uh, he said we are civilians we have no weapon please help us my wife is injured, please help. I, I also cried that my mother is injured, please help us. But there were no reactions. So my father told me to uh, run to my grandmother and ask a neighbor to come uh, to take my mother's body. So I ran back to my grandmother through the forest, to her house. We, we came with my neighbor, but we couldn't take my mother because we understood that uh, if we come to the place, we, we would be shot too. 
So we tried to go back home and we saw that my father is standing near those gates and he is talking to Russians and they told him to call us to come to, him, to them, but we didn't. Fortunately, we didn't because they might do something to us too. So we came back to my grandmother's house. We, we told her my mother is dead. And she started to cry because her daughter, she just talked to her like 30 minutes ago. And it started to get late, it started to get dark. My father still didn't come home. We decided that my grandfather will go and try to talk to Russian soldiers and will, he will ask to take my mother's body and he will check what's happening with my father. So it was like an hour after all of that, my grandfather suddenly came on a car. He told that Russian soldiers, uh, he, he explained, of course, at first they asked him if he is a Nazi, if he knows where the Nazi is, uh, some crazy questions Russian soldiers asked Ukrainians. And then he explained that he just wants to take the body of my mother and they gave him a stolen car and they helped him to put my mother's body into the car on the back seats and he drove to my grandmother's house. It started to rain. We just put her on the, we covered her with a blanket and tried to go to sleep. Of course, we cried all night, we were very scared. But then uh, I, wait, I waited until morning. I wanted to know what's happened to my father. I, I was very shocked. And it was maybe 8 a.m. And my father came back. He was very shocked, so I maybe I, I even would not recognize him. If I, if I saw him like that, he was very shocked and he asked what's, what's with my mother's body. We, we explained him briefly what's happening and we asked what happened to him and he told us that Russian soldiers, when I came to my grandmother's, they told him to took off all his clothes and show if he has any tattoos any Nazi-related tattoos. Of course, my father doesn't. Uh, they checked his documents and they were afraid to come to him and see. They walked through binoculars from the factory. Then they let him come to them and he tried to talk to them. Why, did you, what, why would you do that? They started lying, like, we don't have a sniper here, we didn't shoot. Then they said, oh, we actually shoot, but not in you. We just uh, like a warning signs and we shoot like 20 meters away from you. Then they said, oh, here's the sniper. So they lied all the time. They even couldn't say to him what just happened. Where was the sniper shooting from? I think he was on that building. We can see it now because of the trees. Is that a factory? Yes, it's part of the factory. It's a second floor, mm -hmm. some building. And I think the sniper was there. So after all of that, they just, they, when they saw us, me and my neighbor, they told us, they, they, they asked him to call us to them. And when we go away, they decided that my father should be taken to interrogation. Uh, they put him a bag on his face and they tied his hands behind his back. Uh, they caught him in some kind of armored fighting vehicle and they drove him, him somewhere. He tried to explain this, the soldiers what's happened. The soldiers who drove him to the place, they didn't know what's happening. They asked him what's happening, why are we doing this with you? He explained and some soldiers that just started like, why is this happening? Why is this idiot? Why would this idiot shoot? Mm -hmm. And they got him somewhere. 
maybe it was like higher commander. Then in the morning he came here uh, to my grandmother's house and we tried to have a funeral. You had to bury your mother in the yard. Yes, we couldn't go, go to the cemetery. We couldn't go anywhere, we were afraid to go anywhere. So we just, my father just had to make a grave in our garden. How, where is she now? Now, after Ukrainian police came and they took the, her body to investigation, now we put her on the cemetery and it's our, near our, some other our relatives. This is obviously a very difficult story for you to tell. Yes. It's a very difficult story for me to hear. Why do you want to keep telling it? I, I understand that there are many people whose friends, relatives, close ones were killed, but not everybody is ready to speak, to tell it. But I feel like I, I have to tell this to people around the world. People over the world, world know what Russian soldiers do to Ukrainians to show all the war, war crimes. And I want to explain for people all over the world why we need their help. And I, I just can't let it go and just forget about it. Do you think you will ever be able to forgive them? They don't ask for, for forgiveness, so... <laughs> of course, no, they, they, did not, they did it on purpose, so never.